Probably my favorite thing about questions from y'all um, is the fact that we uh, we could have how we feel something is going to go down. We could, I could have my own viewpoints on something and I could be certain like, hey, this is what I think is happening. This is the reason why I think it's happening. And th those are my thoughts on it. But I always appreciate and this is whether I agree with or disagree with it. But I always appreciate when people bring a different point of view for something as well. And we, and we can look at stuff from a different perspective and see why somebody else may think differently on whatever the subject may be. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to dive into uh, with this Lamar Jackson thing. Now, yesterday we talked about. Um, how so many so much more people are really feeling like this is it for Lamar like this is a wrap for Lamar like this is the end of the Lamar Jackson era with the Baltimore Ravens but there's another possibility and there's another side to that to where this may not be the end for Lamar Jackson and these Baltimore Ravens and that's what we all hope for we know business is business but uh, we hope that the good side of business at least for the Ravens and for Lamar Jackson I hope they they can make business happen to where we don't have to think about or wonder about Lamar Jackson leaving and we're going to talk about that in a little bit but I just had to say I, I really appreciate the fact that y'all do that that y'all bring different points of views like because I could be thinking like all right whether it's about Lamar, whether it's about really about anything, I, I could be thinking like, all right this is going to happen this is the reason why I think it's going to happen this is a b and c why I think this is going to happen and then somebody could present something well where they disagree um, and they could be like, well, this is why I disagree with what you're saying because of X, Y and Z. And then I could be like, well, hey, I, I never thought about that. And sometimes it may make me change my thinking on it. Sometimes it may not. But I always appreciate when people bring that with respect. Because, I mean, you, you do you do get that. We do get that a lot on here where people will disagree, but they'll disagree respectfully, which I appreciate. Then you got your <laughs> then you got your people Well you're just wrong buddy You don't know what you're talking about buddy You're stupid buddy What you saying buddy So you, you, you get all of that too So but anyway It's, 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 it's all good but, Well it's, that's not all good But it is what it is Like even the other day It's funny because I think people just Sometimes when people have their opinions on stuff um, they, they will come to a conclusion. They will come to their own conclusion without actually seeing what something is saying. They'll like, they'll remix what something, what the original question was. Let me give you an example. The other day on Twitter, my guy, Adam, Adam Gardner, he tweeted out, he said, name your top five favorite, name your top five favorite Ravens. Not your, the top five Ravens ever. Not the most legendary Ravens ever. Not the guys who are the best Ravens players ever. No, no, no. Name your top five favorite. So you see the, the two words that really just separated. Your favorite. Those were the two words that made it opinion-based. It's all about you. So... I listened to my top five. I said, it's Lamar, it's Ray Lewis, it's Hollywood, it's Ed Reed, uh, and the fifth one, oh, Laudarius Webb. Those are my top five favorite. And I had a lot of people who were, they were naming their top five favorite too. Some people, oh, okay, I agree with the list. Some people like, oh, no, I, these are my top favorite, and this, this is it. Then there were some people like, this list is ridiculous, buddy. You don't know what you're talking about, buddy. How do you have Hollywood on there? Lord Darius Webb, how long you been a Ravens fan for, buddy? And I'm thinking like, whoa, did it? Did, did the question not say your top five favorite? So these are my top five favorite. But I just know like sometimes people are, are ready to argue. That's all the, some people want to do. That, that, so people saw the original tweet because I quote tweeted it. They saw the original tweet named your top five favorite. And they still took it and ran with it like, oh, I was saying that these are these are just the best five Ravens ever. And I'm just I was like, oh, boy, you, you, can't, you can't say nothing. You, you can't say anything. Um, but again, it, it is what it is. Now, back to the subject at hand. Um, well, before we get into the subject at hand, I got to give a special shout out to the newest team. Keep it clean patron. Uh, my guy, Nicholas, appreciate you uh, being a patron. Appreciate that a, a lot. I, I thank you a lot for that, man. Um, now the question with Lamar Jackson, um, could he possibly stay? Could he possibly be a, a Baltimore Raven for the long term? Um, that would be nice. That would be great. 
Uh, but before we get into that, let's see what my guy Caleb uh, had to say about it. He said, Engraven, we simply don't know Lamar's heart. The last time people thought he wanted to leave, the words that came out of his mouth after those comments were, they don't know the conversations. We simply don't know how he feels. And I believe this is the same case. He simply said they aren't going to talk until the end of the season. And that's true. I, I don't, I never once doubted like, oh, that Lamar would prefer to stay with the Baltimore Ravens. No, 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 no. That wasn't the case. I think Lamar Jackson would love to be a Raven. He obviously got a lot of love for the Ravens, a lot of love for the city, a lot of love for the fans. He got a lot of love for the Ravens franchise as a whole. But the reason that, I, well, one of the reasons why I, I felt like it's, it is a big possibility that he might not be here is because of business. Because of business. And business in the NFL is real. It's very real. Now, we knew, like, going into the season, like you mentioned, he said it from jump. Like, after week one, we ain't talking. We in week, we going into week 17. And, of course, like, you said that after week one, they ain't talking. Nothing can change about the contract from now until the end of the, well, it can change, but nothing is going to change about the contract from now until the end of the season because he said he ain't talking to the end of the season. He said he ain't talking to after the season's over. Um. So, but another thing, too, though, is, just because your heart is somewhere, it doesn't mean that you will be there. Now we hope like that 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 definitely helps though. Because his heart is with the Ravens. He loves the Ravens. That can help a lot. And, and that can make you um when it comes to negotiations, that can make you give a little. Sometimes. I don't think it would be anything that would be um I don't want to say non team friendly, but discount. I, I don't think there would be a discount just because he loves the Ravens. There, now, there, of course, will be some give and take because it's negotiations. Y'all know negotiations. Both sides are trying to win. Ray, Eric DeCosta and the Ravens, Steve Bishotti, they're going to be trying to win. Lamar Jackson, his camp, they're going to be trying to win. Both sides are going to be trying to win and figure out what they can give and also figure out what they can take. But both sides are going to be trying to get that advantage. Um, but that's part of negotiation. It's about what, what are you willing to give up? Oh, what are you? What are they willing to give up? So it's something that could get done. And and if both sides are really in it, if both sides really want to make it happen, then they're gonna have to be some again, some give and take. Um, so we'll we'll see how it goes. And it's hopefully it, it ends up working out. We we really hope that it works out because I I I I want Lamar. Y'all already know how I feel about Lamar. I definitely want him to stay with the Ravens forever. But um, I also. It, it's, it's deeper than just keeping Lamar uh, beyond this year for me. Um, if, if they end up keeping Lamar Jackson, which I would prefer and I would love, I would also just love to see things change. That, that, that's, just, that's my biggest fear, though. That's my biggest fear with the Ravens and them keeping Lamar. Will they change the way that they do offense? That, that's, that's the biggest thing that I would be scared of because it's like, all right, you keep Lamar, you sign him to a big deal, great, awesome. That, that would be amazing. But now what are you going to do? And what about these last five years, or really about the last three years, what should lead me to believe that you're really going to invest in this guy like that? Besides money, the investments go far beyond money. I know money is a pretty big investment, but what about the design, the structure, of the offense itself, the scheme of the offense. Um, how are you going to build around him? How are you going to be like, all right, let's 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 get some talented guys in here uh, to really help take this offense really to another level? That should have been done. That should have been done a long time ago, in my opinion. But now, like, what what's what's going to change? What's going to change from before he really got paid to after he really got paid? See that that that's that's why I'm concerned about it. That, that's why I'm, I'm very scared about it because that's what it makes me feel like is they kind of like by the way that by their thinking, the way they get down, it seemed like this kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because it's like, I right, don't don't want Lamar to leave at all, because um, that would be like really setting the team back again. Um, it, would, it, would, oof, oof, it would it would be rough not to say they couldn't eventually recover because they could. They could eventually recover, but it's like you, you got somebody so special 
right in front of you right now. Right now, and you know it's tough to find a good quarterback. It's tough. It is tough. It's so tough to find a good quarterback. It's really tough. So if you got one, like you would think, I right, y'all gonna want to take care of this guy. Um. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, he said. Uh, but I do believe after the season, uh, convent conversations with Lamar and Eric could be get rid of Giro, and I won't take a fully guaranteed deal. Or Get rid of Harbaugh and I will sign. Just like Aaron Rodgers did, nobody in the world thought Rodgers was going to sign. And look what happened. But we'll see. Ooh, you, <laughs> you put in some pretty big ultimatums there, buddy. <laughs> like the, the first one, get rid of Giro. Okay, that, that really ain't no big thing. But because, again, if they got rid of Giro, all right. Harbaugh going to bring in one of his boys. But the, the second ultimatum, if you say get rid of Harbaugh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, and that's where, that's where things would be very tricky, that's where things would get super tricky, like, that's where, uh, it, it could be 50-50, because if they got rid of Harbaugh, obviously Lamar loves Harbaugh, he, he, he loves him, got a lot of love for Harbaugh and whatnot, if they got rid of Harbaugh though, and they would, either way they're gonna franchise tag Lamar, but they tag and trade or tag and sign or whatever. I mean, it'd be nice if they get it there. But Lamar probably most nine times out of ten probably going to get franchise tagged. Um, but if they got rid of Harbaugh, then they could hire a new regime. And a new regime could be like, hey, well, we we like Lamar. We're going to rock with him. We want to keep him. He would probably play on the franchise tag. See how it works out for that first year with the new regime. Or Lamar could be like, no, I don't want to be a part of this new regime. I don't feel like starting over with y'all. Trade me. That could happen too. So that those ultimatums, like the Giro one is not really a big deal, but the Harbaugh one, that would uh that would create a whole nother just crazy scenario, which uh, we know Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. We said that time and time again. Harbaugh is as safe as safe can be. Um, but he ain't going nowhere. But if if that would have happened, like that would create a whole nother that would make it that much harder. Just it would make everything that much more tough uh, to keep Lamar. So we're gonna see, man. My 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 hope, um, just to close this out, uh, my my hope is that they would keep Lamar, and they would also really invest in him, invest in the offense, like really. Um, but I'm just scared. I'm just scared that it, that won't change. Cause what? Let me tell you my, my my dream scenario. What I would hope the Ravens would do. You can call it crazy. You can call it realistic. You can be hopeful about it too. Whatever. That's fine. Um, I would love. Okay, Ravens. They resign Lamar Jackson. All right, cool. I would love if they traded for somebody who's like that at the wide receiver position. I know a lot of people have been bringing up DeAndre Hopkins recently, and I mean that that would be nice. That would be great. I don't know. Y'all know how I feel about DeAndre Hopkins. That's my favorite receiver. Um, if they, but whether it's DeAndre Hopkins or somebody else, I, I would love for them to just get that guy, somebody who's really, really like that at the wide receiver position. Also, I would want them to draft a a a, a good, not a project. No projects at wide receiver. Not no. Oh well, this guy he got some potential. No, somebody who's like that already in college, and it ain't it ain't even got to be a first round pick. But if somebody like that, then they probably gonna be first, second, something like that. But get somebody who's nice now, who's nice right away, who's not who not somebody who you banking on. Well, maybe they'll develop into an NFL. No, an NFL ready. Wide receiver. So that would be two. So that would be a veteran, not an old veteran, not a washed up veteran, but a veteran who's like that. And also, whether the first or second round, maybe third might be pushing it. But get somebody who's NFL ready. But if they NFL ready, they probably gonna have a higher draft status. And you still got Rashad Bateman coming back. I ain't forget about Bateman. I ain't forget about you, Bateman. Don't worry. I ain't forget about you, buddy. And then he still got Duvernay coming back on the last year of his deal, too. And then you got Prochet as well. And then you, Demarcus Robinson, you could sign him to an extension. Shouldn't cost you much money. Boom. Set. Set. So all the pressure 
again, would not be on base because all the pressure was on him this year. Then he got hurt, so boom, everything went down the drain when he got hurt. As far as the virus, everything went down the drain. But if you do that, if you re if you do that, then you would be setting yourself up nice, really nice. Um, and that again, that that's what I, I would love to see. I would love to see if the Ravens operated like that, like that. Um, also, not done yet. Um, the scheme. I I would say okay, if Giro's gonna go cool, but I. If Hobbs is gonna hire somebody, like it, it gotta be a, a, a collective. Don't just let Hobbs hire a person by himself. And I'm sure they don't just let Hobbs hire him by himself. He gotta go through interviews and da, da, da. But it has. To, I know Hobbs gives the guys free reigns, but if they, they would just really need to scrap their philosophy when it came to the passing game, it needs to be something that you work on more, that you implement more, uh, and that you emphasize more. It has to be. It has to be. Because we wouldn't want all the, to get all this talent at the receiver position. He still got Mark Andrews. And he, oh boy, he would just, it, he would be in such a great position if that happened. Because he'd be able to eat even more. Th this year, he'd been starving. Mark Andrews been starving this year. Because he had no help around him. Everybody, all the defenses, they can watch Mark Andrews. They could be like, oh, take out Mark Andrews. We straight. Because they have been. Now, the Ravens, they still been finding ways to win. But imagine, like, Ravens, they, t for them to win, stuff, and, and a lot of times they make stuff hard on themselves, but they got to scratch, claw, fight out to get a win in the NFL these days. Ravens do. Imagine if they had an offense that was actually like, like that. Imagine that. Ravens would go crazy. Crazy. They would go crazy. Man. So... Whoever the next offensive coordinator would be, just make sure it would be somebody that would really uh, involve the talent that you have and really put them in positions to have success. Play them to their strengths. Build off of their strengths. Let them get consistent games. Establish them like, and then again, we would already have that established wide receiver, somebody who liked that, who so been there, done that. Rashad Bateman would be in his third year. We would have the the rookie who was nice in college, NFL ready. He come in and help. You still got Duvernay, so you when you want to run your jet sweeps, you ready, buddy? Do you ready? Come in motion, man. Here you go. Oh no, it's a fake QB keeper. But anyway, so. I just, I, I want the offense to, to have options. You still got J.K. and Gus, too. We ain't forget about the running game now. You still got Pat Ricard. You signed him to, what, a three-year deal last year? So, I just want the Ravens to have options. I, I, I want them to, to just go off. I'm so tired of seeing this Ravens offense, and it's like, man, they're so limited. They're limited. I, I, I don't like seeing that. I know a lot of y'all don't like seeing that either. We want to see them take it to a whole nother level, man. Because they got potential too. But it's all about the investments. And again, not just the money. But that would be the, for me, that would be the perfect scenario for the Ravens and Lamar Jackson this offseason. That would be the perfect scenario. I would love that. So oh, that would be so great. It would be lovely. Will it happen? We'll see. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. So team, keep it clean. I know we deep into it, but this is another episode of Question from Subs, and that's a series where you can ask me any question you want to. If you want to be part of it for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. For everybody else, you send an email. And if you want to support the channel in any other kind of way, check the description. There's so much stuff down there. You want to send something to the P.O. Box, you, 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 whatever. It's all in the description. But anyway, next question came from my guy, Jerome. He says, run the ball. Now, first, I, I, initially, I, I was not going to do this question. Because I saw the subject, and even though you put the hashtag, the percentage sign, the asterisk, another percentage sign, a hashtag, because you put run the F 
and then you you put all those those signs to 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 sort of bleep out the word that you were saying, the curse word, and this team keep it clean. It's like you 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 sent the question to to team keep. You got a reminder to team keep it clean at gmail.com and you still sent that even with all the the asterisks and all the, the please don't do that man please don't do that like come on now don't 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 do that anyway um he said hey engraving for this video you can call me wrong uh hope all is well with you and your family on this fine sunday afternoon well yeah it was on sunday afternoon everything was good and everything is still good today it's tuesday morning but anyway he said this is my first time sending a question i just want to say i love the content your daily radio videos is what keep me going with this team appreciate it uh, he said, I am sending this during the Falcons game, and I want to know if you think Greg Roman is sabotaging our defense. Our defense plays good just about every game we play, but Greg Roman won't continue to run the ball down the opposing team's throat, uh, allowing for these teams to come back against us. This has been a constant theme this season with us. This season? <laughs> this ain't just been this season. It's been an ongoing thing. Uh, but he said, uh, but if we run the ball when we have these leads, we won't have to worry about leaving so much time for other teams to come back against us, especially when our run game has been so efficient these past couple of weeks. So I just wonder why we even steer from it. Maybe Greg Roman has men has a mentality that he isn't going down alone. And Mike, and Mike will go with him. <laughs> oh, that, that that's funny. Um, <laughs> hey, that, hey that, oh, OK, that, that's funny. Cause you know how some people get in the workplace. They like, all right, if I know I'm about to get fired. You coming with me too, buddy. But anyway, uh, I don't know. But the way Greg calls these games makes me worrisome for the playoffs. Oh, you should be worrisome for the playoffs. We all should be worrisome for the playoffs. We just got to hope like Ravens just do something crazy that they, they have an anom anomaly of an offense and it goes, it goes crazy. But anyway, see, th thanks for all the amazing content. Hopefully this entry makes it in a video and like Greg, Ro Greg Roman for the 2023 season. I'm out. Oof. All right. But uh, yeah, that the 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 play calling is is it's been weird for a long time. It's been sort of awkward for a long time. Like, what are we doing? Why are we doing it this way? What's going on? Uh, and the Ravens, hopefully, come to playoffs, they make it make sense. A nice follow up to the previous questions. Uh, came, that came from my guy, uh, Kyron. He said, Are fans too hard on Greg Roman? What's up, Engraven? I'm sending this email the day after the Falcons game. But I was watching the game yesterday with my mother and brother. I lost it on Giro after he called two straight passing plays with five minutes left after Gus ran for almost 30 yards. They both told me I get too angry at Roman. I was mad because common sense says run the ball while you're up 11 points with five minutes left. And Atlanta can't stop Gus or Jay. Even though he didn't get any touches in the fourth quarter again See, Ravens, they, they, they are their own worst enemy so many times They're their own worst enemy Anyway, he said, why I don't like his play calling or passing schemes It did make me wonder Do you think we as a fan base are too hard on Roman? You literally just listed everything that, that, that Roman be doing wrong <laughs> Now, to criticize the play calling and all that Yeah, okay, cool the the fans that do the disrespectful stuff, not not that not cool, not cool. The, the personal stuff, that's never cool. You talking about the job that we see on the public plat? Okay, cool. Talk about oh, you need to you need to run the ball. We should run the ball. You need to pass the ball. The, the scheme. Okay, cool. Personal stuff, nah, never. So I would agree that the the personal the fans that get personal are too hard on Greg Roman, but the public, no. He said, by the way, I don't. Okay, yep. See. I should have read that too. He said, by the way, I don't condone that video of the fan harassing him after the Broncos game. Yeah, that, that was not cool. It wasn't funny at all. And the last question on this episode came from J8N. She said, hey, I ain't graven. I doubt that I'll be selected, but I do have a question I'm curious about. Don't come in like that. Don't come in with the negativity. Don't say, oh, man, I'm, a, I'm sending this question, but I doubt I'll be picked. If you really doubt it, see, look, look, how, I, look, look how I, I know you don't believe that. If you really doubt it that we were going to use your question in an episode of question from subscribers, then you would have never sent it in the first place. So you knew, buddy! Anyway, I doubt that I'll be selected, but I do have a question I'm curious about. First, I do want to say how grateful I am for your channel and all the hard work you always put in. Appreciate that. I th thank you. Uh, though this year has been quite negative at times, and it felt like the Ravens were never <laughs> going to get it together at times. <laughs> I can't argue with you on that one. Uh, your channel is always a source of happiness and comfort for Ravens fans, especially us fans uh, who live abroad. Now, I always look forward to seeing notifications, knowing it's time to watch some quality Ravens content. Thank you. That, 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 that's real special right there. I appreciate that. Uh, second, my question comment is actually regarding Kyle Hamilton. Now, I'm not super knowledgeable about football specifics. Hey, me neither. Uh, especially position name, but I had, I had a thought about why Kyle Hamilton seems to be performing better in his first year in comparison to previous first round picks. Mm, well, before we get, before we get into it, I think, um, I think it's because of less pressure. 
I think it's because of less pressure on Kyle Hamilton, the situation that he's put in. Like, think about it. Um, excuse me. And this, like, now that I'm thinking about it, too, the scenario that I was envisioning for the Ravens on offense, like with Rashad Bateman and a first-round draft pick and having a veteran um, to, that they acquired via trade, probably not free agency because it ain't out there, but via wide, wide receiver. But what we were talking about at the beginning of this video, um, that's the situation that Kyle Hamilton is in because the Ravens went out and got a veteran. They signed Marcus Williams to that big deal. They had somebody at the position already in Chuck Clark, and then they went and drafted Kyle Hamilton in the first round. That's what I want them to do at the wide receiver position. Go get a veteran, somebody like that. You, you, and you still got somebody already at the position in Rashad Bateman who's, who, who's, who's showing himself, and then you could still draft somebody. But anyway, um, I think Kyle Hamilton has been better because there's less pressure on him. Like, yeah, he's a first-round pick, and first-round picks come with high expectations, but there are guys at his position already that are holding it down, so he ain't got to come in and be the savior. Rashad Bateman, he was supposed to come in and be the savior. Uh, Odafe away, because our pass rush was just all kinds of bad. He was supposed to come in and be the savior. Uh, but with Kyle Hamilton, he's in such a good position to where he doesn't have to come in and do that. But let's hear what you had to say. She said, Hollywood, peak. Oh. I should have read it. I, my, 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 see, this, I get to run in my mouth. I get to run in my mouth, and then we be thinking about it. We be on the same page. I didn't even think about PQ. But she said, Hollywood, PQ, and Bateman were all drafted to fill an immediate weakness or opening on the team. Boom. You 1,000% spot on. Spot on. Uh, she said, they were all expected to start right away and be the solution. Man, I, yeah. See, I got it talking. I got it talking. But anyway, she said, as has been for a while, there haven't been any decent vet wide receivers on the team or linebackers for PQ and Bateman or Hollywood to really learn from. Kyle Hamilton has had Chuck Clark to watch and learn from and other quality caliber secondary and safeties. Um, yeah, this is, oh, excuse me. It seems that Hamilton hasn't had the immediate kind of pressure the others have had. Uh, he wasn't plugged into the lineup to be used as something the Ravens were desperately lacking. Yes, yes, yes. That's why from jump, I say he was a luxury pick. He was a luxury pick. Yeah, they're probably going to get rid of Chuck Clark after this year, but Kyle Hamilton was a luxury pick. Ravens could have went in so many different areas, but they, they went for who they felt was the best player available. Uh, he said, I know football is very different from baseball where guys are able to grow their talents over a period of time. In football, first-rounders are drafted with the intention of becoming starters their first year majority of the time. That's true. Anyways, this was a thought I had while watching Kyle Hamilton perform better than the past three first-round draft picks uh, his first year. As we can see, PQ is now able to make the plays that he should have always been making because he's finally getting the help he's needed. I believe it was an interview from Marlon Humphrey who said PQ had been doing everything on his own. This also makes me think, uh, of course, of a certain Ravens QB who also... Uh, uh, could have been reaching his potential if the Ravens would invest in getting him the help he needs. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Ooh. She said, My main question is Oh, I, th I thought you, I thought that was it. I thought you had already said everything, but she said, My main question is Do you think this could be a reason why Kyle Hamilton has been better than PQ, Hollywood Bateman, in his first year with the team? Or could there be another reason? Like, he's just more talented. Uh, best to the whole family and everyone part of the team. Keep it clean. And Ravens flock from a faithful subscriber. Hey, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's exactly it. And again, we, yeah, we were thinking on the same page. I should have kept just reading what you said, but we jumped into it. And yeah, we, we had the, the, the same thought process. Again, the, less pressure. Less pressure. Kyle Hamilton didn't have to come in and be that guy to, to help out right away. Or not to not help out, but he didn't have to come in and be the guy, be the savior uh, right away. They were able to, to bring him along slowly. The other guys, they, they had the – and, and situa different situations call for different stuff or whatnot. But the other guys, they would they asked to come in, fix it right away. Fix it. You ain't, ain't, no, you ain't got no time to really get help like that. No, fix it. We need you to be that guy. And they just hadn't been really ready yet. Yeah, this feels like a dream And you know just what I mean You see my boy, he like gotta made it how to made it Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens like the Ravens And you know just what I mean You too team keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it how to made it Boy that's my homie ain't that right and graven right and graven Shout out to Graven.